Today we're going to look at um, two new terms um, in our unit. We're going to look at the term intramolecular bonding and intermolecular bonding. So you can see that I've used water as an example. Um, if we were to if we had to go through and describe what intramolecular bonding is, um, it's really the strong bonds found within um, a molecule. And this example between the H and the O, it's an example of a covalent bond, but we can also find intramolecular types of bonds in ionic substances and in um, metallic substances. But what is also really interesting for chemists to study is another type of bonding called intermolecular bonding. And you can see that intermolecular bonding is actually the interactions between um, individual, individual molecules and themselves. Um, and what is really interesting about water, we've talked about water is really unique. It um, um, has a really high boiling point. Um, it shows that it has a lot of cohesiveness, which means stickability um, between its water molecules. Um, it basically has, um, ice has unusual properties where um, it can float. And that is all because of the intermolecular bonds that we see between the oxygen and the hydrogen. So today's experiment, we're going to look at this concept of um, different substances and how the different types of intermolecular bonds affects their properties. So in class, we've been talking a lot lately about um, using Lewis structures and um, working out valence electrons and being able to draw molecules. And that's kind of been a major step in our pathway to being um, able to understand and predict how certain molecules behave. So you can see down here I've got four different substances. I've got water, acetone, um, some alcohol and glycerol. And you can see down here there's been two representations of these molecules. There's been the structural one on top using the lines, which we more or less worked towards in our last lesson. We did the dots and then we talked about how we can use lines to repre represent those bonds as well. So we're kind of taking this up a step further and we're going to do an experiment to look at how we can investigate how um, intermolecular forces can affect the way that molecules behave. Remember that intermolecular forces are those forces that are found between molecules um, together. So we looked at the water molecules in the previous example. So what I've done here, you can see, is I wanted to see how, if I had many acetone um, molecules together in the solution, how it would affect its evaporation, surface um, tension, and boiling point. And acetone is the major, major ingredient in um, nail polish remover and for those of you that do their nails regularly you should know that acetone is quite flammable and it's also quite volatile which means that if you leave the cap off it it actually evaporates and there's a really good reason why that actually happens and we're going to look at that so you can see down here on my experiment that i have put droplets of my different substances here that i'm going to test to see what happens when I drop them out of the bottle. I want to test what we call the surface tension. So what is surface tension? So surface tension is really the attraction between molecules of the same substance, and this is known as actually cohesion. Cohesion between neighboring water molecules is especially noticeable uh, at the surface of water. These water molecules form many hydrogen bonds with the water molecules beneath them and beside them but not with the molecules in the air above them. This causes the surface water molecules to be drawn together and we, we get what's called a, a spherical shape. So surface tension really is, um, for water you can see, um, we've talked about this, that water, this is number four, this is what I've actually done is I've poured the same amount of droplets onto a piece of plastic and I've watched to see how they've um, what's happened to them when I've dropped them on. So you can see I've put a ring around um, what happens. So you can see that for water, the molecules from a drop and they don't really spread out that much on the piece of plastic. Whereas with acetone and alcohol, 
they really create quite a big puddle. There's no attraction going on between those molecules. And glycerol, which is quite a sort of slow, viscous sort of substance, um, really created the smallest drop. So I've rated them. So you can see that uh, glycerol had or demonstrated the most surface tension. The molecules were very, very attracted to each other. Um, water was um, in second place and um, then it was um, alcohol followed by acetone, okay? And there's a rationale for that because um, we can look at the structures and um, we can actually make some predictions about why they behave in that certain way. Okay, so we did the experiment and you can see that um, glycerol had the smallest drop followed by water, um, then alcohol and acetone. And to be able to understand why we had those results, we really need to look at the structure of the different solutions that we had here. And you can see there's lots of cross-cutting concepts, patterns that we can observe with these um, molecules. Um, the question is why is why is glycerol why why is it why does it form a smaller drop than water why are his, are its molecules more attracted to each other and there's a couple of reasons for that there's actually in glycerol there's an increased number of, of electrons that was res, that result in what we call greater intermolecular forces um, and you can see that water is actually much more of a smaller molecule you can see that Water has the potential to create one hydrogen bond. You can see if I point to it up here with, um, with, uh, with its um, particular structure. And you can see that with um, glycerol, there's actually three regions that have the ability to form these hydrogen bonds. There's more hydrogen bonding actually happening. So therefore, there's going to be more cohesiveness between um, its molecules, okay? So then we're looking at um, isopropyl alcohol and acetone and if we look at those particular structures we can see that um, acetone is basically created our biggest droplet so obviously that's representative, representative of it having um, less bonding going on in fact there's no hydrogen bonding in acetone and that's because there's no hydrogen connected to that oxygen on that particular part of the molecule. And then with the isopropyl alcohol, you can see there's one region where on that OH group, where um, it allows for those hydrogen bonds to actually take place. We can also make assumptions about the polarity of the molecule as well. So we know that acetone is actually miscible in water and we know that with alcohol as well. And we've obviously know that because we've been using the hand sanitizer, it's a perfectly great example of how we can put alcohol into hand sanitizer um, and I think I mentioned that the longer the chain the more C's that we have in our alcohol basically directly relates to how miscible it is. If we have a much much longer chain of C's it's much more non-polar and it's less miscible. Um, so that's another important thing that we tend to look at when we're looking at the structure of molecules. Okay, so you can see, and you're going to have to do something similar for your activity for today, that this is just um, a lab sheet filled out by um, a student that had previously done this. They wrote and planned out this investigation of looking at um, surface tension. It's just a rough copy. It hasn't been quite completed, but I think you can get the general idea. And what you're going to do for me today, because this is going to be um, a summative at the end of this unit where you're going to have to plan and carry out your own investigation with some of the concepts that we've learned about in our unit. You're going to have an attempt at looking at how you can plan an investigation for um, looking at evaporation and if you, um, you can relate intermolecular forces and connect it with evaporation. So that's what you're going to do for me today. You're going to have to think about how you're going to set the experiment up you're going to use the same substances that I used for surface tension. Um, you're going to have to th think of some things that you're going to need to keep the same, okay, to keep it a fair test, and how you're actually going to record your data. You can use the equipment that you can see here on my table, okay, just showing you. There's plastic film, 
um, there's measuring cylinders and there's also droppers um, and I want you to think about how you could plan and carry out an investigation for looking at the concept of linking evaporation and intermolecular forces together.